Night Show. Night Show. Night Show. Night Show. Hey, hey, hey. Night Show. I'm just kidding. Sounds on tonight. <laughs> uh, it's the Night Show Live. I'm Ryan Roberts. Welcome. Happy Friday. WTF, TGIF, WWJD. The last one is, what would Jesus do? Probably party, because it's Friday. With me, as always, my illustrious producer, Jim Lauber the third. How yeah, are you doing, the third. Jim? I'm good. Good. So uh, some news uh, just came out on uh, Tom Petty's cause of death. The official cause of death, accidental overdose. So we'll be talking about that. Also tonight, my guest, my good friend, Matthew James, who is a uh, a hypnotist, a comedian, a wrestling guru, an Uber driver, a um, a good friend. And an Uber good guy. An Uber good yep. <laughs> Yeah, very good, James. So we're going to be taking phone calls. Please like, please comment, please share. It's the night show live. I'm Ryan Roberts. How you doing over there, Matthew James? You... Oh, I was putting my camera together. I didn't know we were going to break the fourth wall, Chief. That's okay. So um, I'll just read this to you as uh, – I don't need these on, actually. Uh, I'll just read this to you as it says, After month of, months of speculation, a medical examiner has ruled that Tom Petty died of an accidental overdose, according to a statement from the Los Angeles County Department uh, Medical Examiner. The Hall of Fame musician had taken several pain medications – including fentanyl, including actyl fentanyl and desipropyl fentanyl, mm. oxycodone and generic Xanax. That's a lot of things to have. Generic? Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. If, that was that was the problem right if there. If Tom Petty can't afford the real the real version of that drug, what chance do I have to afford <laughs> the real? What's wrong with our healthcare system when he's like, give me the knockoff? Right, right. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Ro- R- Rost? Restoral? Restoral? What? A sleep aid? Oh, Restoral. Restoral, thank well, you. did his and, job. And uh, generic <laughs> Celex, which, depletes, deplete, which treats depression. So he had a lot of things going on. The cause of death is multi-system organ failure due to resuscitated cardiopulmonary arrest due to mixed drug toxicity. So that just came out about an hour ago. Um... And, of course, Tom Petty, we play him all the time here on 99.1 PLR. Very sad death. And um, don't do drugs, right? Especially generic Xanax. Don't do generic Xanax. (laughs) Now, let me ask you this. Are these guys taking this stuff, you know, on their own accord? Or do they have these these private physicians that are saying, yeah, yeah, that's good. You could mix that with that. And uh, you could take this. Apparently, he had um, a hip replacement. And there was something else, uh, hip and... No, I think he didn't get the hip replacement, and he but, was oh, just he kept... Did it, right, and he just, and he just kept touring, yeah. Right. Which happens with you. Um, I, I saw him this summer. All the fentanyl, that's what that's what Prince died of, too. It was uh, The fentanyl was in Prince's thing, too. Right, right. I kind of want to draw some fentanyl. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> you really don't. Isn't that the drug right now where they're like... Hey, bring baby wipes to the grocery store with you and wipe the shopping carts. So wipe the handle so you don't get the wow. fentanyl on your fingers. I haven't heard it that. makes sense though, because they they even had cops uh, get very sick from you know pulling somebody over and just what catching a whiff or just I, touching I, it. I just heard anything. About they searched this one police officer searched the car of someone that had fentanyl and then OD'd. The cop OD'd right. just from touching it. Wink. And yeah, what, what was, was it? Oh, I touched him. Touched him. <laughs> so, um, so I'll tell you a little story. Um, yeah, it is a bummer. Stephen Edward uh, Jenowich, bummer about Tom Petty. I know Brian T. Shellnut, Wild Meds. I know. Hey Ryan, putting a buzz on. Good i good idea, Frank. I did not smoke weed before this show because I didn't want any more. Uh, um, last night on the show, I forgot to turn on like no. all the microphones and then Come one on. mic. No, it wasn't. I was trying out something, a new technical skill. Getting drugged. And I, getting, yeah, getting, getting get, super yeah, high. Getting super of, high before Instead the of show. just regularly high. So my friend Matthew and I have uh, known each other for about 15 years. I first met him at 
Six Flags New England. Um, before I was in radio, I uh, toured the world doing a comedy variety show, doing uh, sideshow stunts, uh, juggling, juggling, eating, whip cracking. Whip, yep, yeah, I can uh, tar- I can whip a cigarette out of somebody's mouth. Um, Anyone's really any? Yeah. Well, I, I was just thinking you because you're standing in front of me. <laughs> you're, you're behind the printer. Eddie Schaefer, who works um, for our sister station, one hundred two nine The Whale. He also comes down here occasionally. Yeah. Uh, he says, hey, brother, um, private message. I don't know why he did that. Maybe he wants to talk to He doesn't to know us. you're on the, hey, man. Maybe he wants to talk to us. About the restaurant. <laughs> Do you need some? Y'all um, got any more of that restaurant? So Frank Ayers says, just another legend lost. The one thing I hate more than drugs is what it does to people. And that's a good point, Frank. I've actually um, been lucky enough to stay away from drugs, I've never done drugs in my life. I've done a, a lot of smoking of the uh, devil's lettuce. However, I've never done pills. I've never done powders because it scared the shit out of me, honestly. Yeah, you know, yeah like, that's the one thing Dare worked. Don't do this or you'll die. Well, well yeah, we'll we do don't that. want to do that. It yeah. helped because when I met you, I was in my formative years. Like, I was a very young man touring the country with you who had been already touring the country for 10 years with Steve one half of uh, Juggle This, but, like, if you guys were into fucked up shit, I would have been you, done for. Oh, absolutely. It would have been the first road trip. It was because I wasn't even smoking pot when I was, because I was working at Six Flags, and they drug tested, because God forbid you're high to be the you bat, to be the to Riddler. Smoke. I would have had to smoke weed to work. Well, I did smoke weed when well, I worked did. at you Six Flags. Well, you did. You did smoke weed to work at but Six you, Flags. You were, um... Foghorn Leghorn? Foghorn Leghorn. I was inside the costume Foghorn Leghorn. I was also the Riddler. In the Batman stunt show, so ah. the uh, so the first two acts, you're Two Face, and then you take off those, and then you're the Riddler underneath that. That was the most shape. I've, that was the best in shape that I've ever been in my entire life. My cardio was up. I looked good. Seventeen years old. I was what happened? Just fat, and I'm just fat and bald. <laughs> I think you happened actually. Sorry. You're like, hey, come to Fogo to show. Uh, we're gonna get into a meat induced coma at this Brazilian steakhouse <laughs> in Denver. And I never stopped eating like an asshole. So if you've never been to an all-you-can-eat Brazilian uh, steak restaurant, there's one, there's uh, Texas de Brazil, and there's Fogo de Show, and they have a cut. There's one in Chicago, one in New York, um, and it's 50 bucks, and it's all-you-can-eat meats that come, like a dude comes by. like The meat on meat, a stick. Meat on a stick, and it's cooked on, like, charcoal grills inside. It's, it's bacon-wrapped um, filet mignons. Yeah. Um, Parmesan uh, encrusted chicken. It's Brazilian. Mm. It's yeah. It's it's like the gauchos. They have their little you know costumes on, and the gauchos come over and say meat, sir. You and get a little that, shaker. It's yeah. either on red or green. Yeah. So and if it's, it's like a coaster. Yeah. And you put it, if it's on the green side, bring meat out the dudes. Meat. Just keep coming with the meat. Go with the meat. And then if it's on red, no, no mas. So, no mas meat, por favor. So to go back, just gonna backtrack because I wanted to tell this story. Um. As part of yes, Tony, the meat sweats. We have both had the, the meat. meat the Jim, water you ever have the meat sweats. sweats? Yes. Yep. I love the meat sweats. Mm. See, why do drugs when you can you do meat? Do meat, <laughs> right? Um. My mom, Brian T. Shellnut says, my mom got fired from substitute teaching because she admitted to some students that she smoked pot in college. As well, she should have been wow. fired. <laughs> good good the season we don't standards need those potheads and our around substitute our teachers children. so um i i um used to work at a strip club as a dj and uh a manager sometimes um thanks for coming out guys coming to the stage next we got crystal see i can do it so a girl goes up to go dance in the private dance area and uh, I wasn't paying attention. And I look up, and the dude that she was supposed to be doing a dance for had disappeared. Oh. Gone. And left her slumped over in the corner of the, pri- the, yeah, the private dance area. And so uh, the bouncer was like, dude, I, I don't think she's doing very well. <laughs> she's not doing so well. So I go over, and the, the guy was nice. He, he had tucked a $20 bill in her hand. So Here. She, She's passed out. Yeah. Yes. So she I she can pay go, St. Peter on the way to the cup. <laughs> right. So this so she's passed out in the corner with a $20 bill in her hand. 
and I check her pulse, and it's really, really light and really not low. Great. And that's not, not a great pulse. No, it's not good. And uh, so I check her pulse on her neck, check her pulse on her wrist, because I don't know, maybe I thought it would be different. Um, and I could see her lips are kind of blue, right? So I lie her on her back at first, and I go run to the bar, and I get a... Um, I get a wet towel. That should do it. Like an icy towel. Like, I don't know what the some, hell's going some on. Some Windex. Like, this is, right. So <laughs> wind- <laughs> wake up, wake up. Tried everything. Hot towel, cold towel. Tried it all. So um, I could literally see the blue in her lips slowly creeping into her face. Ooh, like it was no. just the lips. And then so her whole face goes white and the blue starts to like take mm. over her face. And I could hear... That she's really shallow breathing, and it's, like, freaking me out. So I lay her on her side in case she, if she threw up and aspirate, like, I didn't want her to aspirate on her vomit, like, pull a uh, Jimi Hendrix or a whatever. And um, so I'm yelling out to anyone, does anyone have any Narcan? Because I'm thinking that this chick is OD. Yeah. So a guy's like, I have some Narcan. No, he doesn't. I, <laughs> yeah, I swear to God. So he runs out to his car. And brings a duffel bag in. It was two guys, and and they take the thing that they, they take this. It's like a box like that big, and one of the guys is like, "Yo, we got to get out of here." He's like, "I know, but the, the chick is dying." And of course, the whole time through my head, I'm thinking Pulp Fiction, right? I'm thinking like there's going to be a huge needle. Marcellus Wallace <laughs> yeah, is gonna yeah, kill gonna, you if you don't get this right, done. Give me right. a marker. Give me a magic I'm, marker. Right, I'm going to have to like get a magic marker and like stab her in the chest, and she's going to come. <gasps> So this thing talks to you. So you press a button on it. It's like it's like um, take off red cap. So you I, take I can off, do this. Yeah, you take <laughs> off the cap, and it says put against skin. And so you put it against the skin. Yours it, or not, hers? Not oh, hers, hers, obviously. They should specify. And you hit the thing, and you can hear it go, and nothing fucking happens. I expected like the Pulp Fiction to her for her to come scrambling. Yeah, but that was out. adrenaline that they pumped into. Yeah, I Ooh, know, but when you're injecting a stripper with Narcan, you're not or really anything, thinking, really. like, right, exactly. You're not really thinking to yourself, yeah. well, you know, like, so I uh, I give her the Narcan, and the bouncer had called the EMTs, and the fire department comes, and so I'm looking through her purse now to try to find, like, what the fuck did she take, and all I could find was... Uh, the twenty dollar bill that I had put there, you know, because I'm an honest person. <laughs> you put back. I should have taken it from her just for the. That's worth twenty dollars. Yeah. yeah, like having a Narcan your ass is worth twenty bucks, but I didn't take it. And they, um, yes, uh, uh, Audra Knight says, "Was this before nine one one?" Yeah. So as they were responding right away, the bouncer called nine one one. It took about ten minutes for them to get there. Uh, first, the EMTs came, and she was. Uh, they laid her out flat and gave her some oxygen. I told her I Narcaned her. They gave her some more nar- Narcan. <laughs> good measure. Just for good measure, because sometimes I guess it takes more than one. And she slowly came out of it. And I've never seen this look on anyone's face. I've never had an OD like experience before. And she was like had no idea where she was. She was completely like just out of it. And um they took her away and she had OD'd. They like I found out later. She OD'd on heroin and fentanyl. Fentanyl. Wow. Fentanyl. So that's that's really the thing that's you know that's getting because you could put it's like uh it's micrograms like tiny tiny one little granular of that shit and uh, it's all she wrote. So us. a written warning, verbal warning, or what? Would you, you give know, her? What did I give yeah. her? Yeah, is that I, the employee guidebook? I, I quit. Oh, you quit? I, so she didn't lose her job. You lost your job as a result of her heroin addiction. I didn't lose my job. <laughs> yeah, that just... was enough for me. I was like, you know I gotta what? go. I can I can handle like I'm forty yet. something. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, I exactly. Can't do this I'm forty two. I'm, I'm I'm just I'm not narcanning strippers <laughs> yeah. or anything. Anyone <laughs> for that matter. Say what again, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> prank caller. Prank, prank caller. caller. Prank caller. So you know, is there a sign out there that says "Dead Stripper Storage"? Russ <laughs> McGovern says, "Yeah, no, I did put her on her side, and then when they came, they put her on her back. So her they other can side, her, they, so they can give her out, like they give her oxygen, around. and they they shot her up there. But yeah, no, I did. Thank you, Russ. Uh, I I did put her on her side. So when you say she was in the private dance room, that's the hand job room, right? Is that what you meant? She she no, passed that's out. The VIP room. The, the yeah. champagne room is the uh, is the hand job room. is the over right. the pants hand job. No room. sex in the champagne room. No, just over the pants hand job for seventy dollars. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> right. At least go to a rub and tug and get the massage. Because you get a massage. You get a massage. Maybe even a nice bath. Maybe they'll uh, hot towel you down in your nether regions. I did that in California. Did you? A I full did. Did you get paid? Did you get paid well? No. The pr- You see, the issue was I went in with two of my buddies because we were about ready to deploy. So we were like, yeah, why not? Let's, you know, we, so we gave it a shot. And, um, you know, you kind of get your pick. It wasn't very good. It was like Palm Springs, California on the outskirts. So uh, I ended up getting the madam. Ooh. Who's usually 50. Uh, Ooh, I, I, I mean, I've heard. I would peg her for like 56 at the time. Mm-hmm. So I'd peg her right for now she's that. probably 50, <laughs> 70. But I got the madam. I don't know how that happened. Seniority. My money's as good as anybody else's. But yeah. Maybe everyone was busy. It, it could be. Well, we were the only three people in there. But you never know, man. So is there any more? Is did. So did you get a hand job or no? No, it was the madam. Yeah. Oh, really? It was the madam. The most. Was that the oldest hand job you've ever got in your life? I was twenty. So yeah. Wow. Yep. I had a fight with my friends today about hand jobs, and they said that they there's no way they could they could finish to a hand job anymore. And I go, it's not a hand job. At this point in the game, it's not a hand job. It's a it's a hot oil penis massage. Right. Is really what you're looking for is a little coconut oil warmed up on the stove. Uh, a little wipe down. It's a hot oil penis massage. It's not a hand. It's not an eighth grade hand job anymore. Well, hopefully, <laughs> right? Where you do it really quick before your girlfriend's got you know get let off the bus. Yeah, at her yeah. Stop. Well, Jesus, on the bus, I, it has happened. Deep I've seats. Seen, I've not seen it, but I know it's happened. Wow, with the smell of pleather. <laughs> that the pleather, the the, the and with, old lunches. You can see the veins in it. Yeah, pleather and old lunches. Dorito bags stuffed into the seats. Oh my god. Thanks for watching Night Show Live. I'm Ryan Roberts with here uh, uh, with me as usual, my producer Jim Lauber the Third, my guest tonight, James uh, Matthew James Matthew James, who is a wrestling guru. He is a hypnotist. We're gonna have you hypnotize. Yeah, somebody we'll have to sometime. do that. We'll have to go. I think we'll start the show with him. I'll take him into the other room, hypnotize him real quick, and then bring him back in because I don't I don't want people passing out at their computers as I hypnotize people. But that's a shoot. I'm a real hypnotist. That's not a... No, it's true. There's not a gimmick to that. Uh, he used to work, um, before I blew the contract, um, he used to work uh, at a, uh, all-inclusive resorts in Mexico. In Mexico, so- from Playa del Carmen to Tulum, Cancun, and all the, the Mayan Riviera. Right. And then as soon as we fucked that gig up, fish started playing down there. That's true. Waited so the whole his, time for fish to play We had a there. driver, Ar, Arnupo. 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 And he knew no English whatsoever, but he knew he could teach us the bad, the, the bad uh, Mexican words, like uh, Pinoche. That's one I remember. See, si. um, What was the other bad words? Uh, Bendejo. Mm, Bendejo, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, there was another one. There's, There's some really bitch. upset uh, people that speak Spanish right now. <laughs> they just tuned in. <laughs> yeah. Hola, 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 oh, CCC. Hola, 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 CCC. So if you have any questions for uh, Matthew James, he is here. I'm going to be making some phone calls. Let's try to do a phone call. Let's do a actually. phone call. Who are we calling? Let's call, um, let's call Jimmy Nash. Oh, my God. That's a terrible idea on a Friday. He said to call, so of course he did. He doesn't remember the last three times we called. He's still waiting for you to call him for the first time. Do you know Audra Knight? She says, "Pretty sure I've seen that face on Matthew." Oh, never mind. I got you. Um, so that's not opening now. That's good. Jimmy Nad spilt fireball over all of his electronics, so that's not <laughs> happening. Kurt Flaherty's here. What's up, Kurt? Kurt, he's been on. He's been here. Too late, late work, but Chief? better late than never. Mm-hmm. A little camera there. Yeah, move your microphone that way just a smidge. No, that's that. Everyone saw that. <laughs> Even Deborah Klein, she said uh, they How's should my have. Technique? They should have narc kits in the club. They Do should. They, they do, and I they heard. Don't, and I, well, I was told that there was a narc kit in yeah, the club, yeah, but I was there. never told where. where? <laughs> It's like, do we have? I asked the question, do we have Narcan? Yes. Like, oh yeah, we do. Where is it? <laughs> Where's Time, the fire exits? Time's a here. factor. So while I'm going through drawers, you know, filled with old batteries and uh, rubber bands, <laughs> you know what I Ooh, mean? Some, some strippers dying. Oh, window green, good mint. So yeah, I've I've actually saved a Narcan to stripper. I don't know if you saved her. You prolonged what's going on. I saved her. <laughs> saved for that. For that. I saved her. No, I saved her. Kind of want some fentanyl. No, you oh, don't. I mean, I don't want fentanyl. <laughs> Sorry. Wink. I'm trying to give um, 
Jimmy Nads a call. It's not work. How about you call me Jimmy Nads? Yeah, you how about know, you do something, Jimmy? You know my number. Besides tow your camper into the woods and leave it there for four days. Hi to uh, Jamie. How you doing, Jamie? Christian is here. Christian. Uh, Christian said they would talk to me, but um, I don't know. My computer is all frozen. At least people can hear me tonight. That's good. At least you potted up the mics instead of potting up yourself. <laughs> Tony the- Tagney said, uh, Jim, you've been at this rub and tug. Four hour, you go home now. <laughs> actually, you've been here for hours. She did talk that way, and did I she- actually bargained for the uh, for the special treatment. Did you? She said $40. I said, I have $27. $27. <laughs> yep. She go, okay. Okay. Was, and you it. have to massage the <laughs> shrapnel in my nuts. Yep. No, that was before. That was before. We oh, pre shrapnel nuts. Was pre, oh, before deployment. Pre, yeah. Yep. Jimmy. Jimmy Naz goes. How the fuck do we call? Good. Great job. We've only Good. done this four times. Jim. Good. There's a little. So Jim, there's a, when you go to the messenger, you'll see a little thing that looks like a television camera, and you press the television camera. Well, it doesn't look like a television camera. It just looks like a box with a triangle attached to it. It's right next to the plus, in between the uh, plus and the phone. So if you hit that, that'll call me. Hey, 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 says Jamie. Rachel says I know that guy. Kurt, what's up, Kurt? Which dude looks like a pedophile, my friend? Which one? Yes. Of the three of us, come on. Yeah, come on. I'm the pedophile? <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about my friend Matthew James? I hope not. Cause... Me too. I hope not. Because, uh. If you want me to bring in a guy that looks like a pedophile, I'm the second pedophile. Like uh, Jim's the third. Not he's not a pedophile. Look at him. He's a handsome, gorgeous head of hair. That's how I get away with it because I don't look <laughs> like it's one. It's always the what you least suspect. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna um, log out of this. Go back to see if I can get this working here. Rick Massio, what's up? Cindy Hotchkiss, what's up? Cindy's here a lot now too. Yeah, thanks for joining totally. us, Cindy. We appreciate it. So, Matthew, tell me a, uh... oh, you know what? What, Chief? Tell everyone what you did in Mexico when you hypnotized the girl and then their family came back and then made that you... was That was one of the first times. So, like, this is the show I've been, I had a, 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 a mentor or whatever, the guy that taught me it. I apprenticed to become a hypnotist. He's a terrible person. But we, so we. But a good hypnotist. Well, in, no, I mean. Well, he's... he taught me how to be a good hypnotist. So. A I, I kind of approached it as a play because I had been doing some acting and stuff to that point, And I was like, just learn the script. Fuck the theory. Like, keep some of the theory in your head, but learn it like a script. Say exactly what this asshole says, and you're a hypnotist. So, like, I get it. I'm, like, down. I got everyone down. I'm bringing them back up. And now you go back through and you put them down individually. Three, two, one, sleep. First time. I was like, here we fucking go. Am I a hypnotist or not? Three, two, one. One sleep, and they go like this. I go, holy shit, it worked! <laughs> holy shit, it worked! And that girl crashed down. So she, so this was your first time. That, that was my very first hypnotist gig. It was at Puerto Aventuras in uh, Puerto Aventuras, uh, Mexico, in the Mayan Riviera. So she goes down. I do the show. It's the family show. No swearing, no drug references, and stuff like that. Uh, she comes back up. Everything's fine. We're going to leave. I'm selling copies of my show to everybody. We're going to leave, and the family comes running up to me. They go, you broke her. And I go, what? They go, you broke her. She's a very nice girl, and she's in the, she's in the bedroom swearing, and she just scratched her brother, and what did you do to her? And I was like, I don't fucking know. I just <laughs> learned. I just said some words at her young, impressionable mind. So we had to go down there, and luckily the hypnotist who trained me was there, and he kind of talked her out of it. And then as as we're leaving, the family's running up to us to, like, stop us again. And I see that they're coming, but the, the hypnotist that I'm with doesn't see that they're coming, and the driver doesn't see that they're coming. And they're, like, trying to flag me down, and I'm like, hey, let's get out of here. Let's just go. And we drive off, and, like, that was the end of it. I don't know wow. what happened to that girl. So you never fixed the problem? We we fixed it as we were walking out. They were like, no, come back. She's being a bitch again. So I was like, all right, we'll go back, fix it again. And now we're leaving. And I'm like, I'm not fucking trying this a third time. Like, your da- I broke your daughter. Sorry. 
It's not the worst thing that could happen to your daughter in Mexico. I wonder if she's still like that. She's still out there scratching totally her brother. Al- I wonder if you altered her personality permanently. You know what happened at UConn? I did UConn. This is the last time I went to UConn. We did, I did a show in one of the classrooms or whatever it was. It was for you. It was under your, your uh, company's uh, Perfect. insurance. Perfect. So I uh, totally relax. We're doing the show. And I look over and the girl, a girl is crying. And I'm like, oh, man. And now that everyone's like, she's crying. And I was like, oh, boy, I can't ignore this one. So she couldn't move her body. Like, she wouldn't move. So I was like, well, I still got 10 minutes of the show left. Like, maybe she'll snap out of it. Show's over. Send everyone back to their seats of the thing. And she's like, I can't move. And I'm like, kill me. She goes, I can't move. And I'm like, all right, we're going to wake you out of this. Like, well, well. A warm, glowing sensation. Fucking making this shit up. A warm, glowing sensation waking up from your toes all the way up to your ankle. I get all the way up her body. And I'm like, three, two, one, wide awake. Nothing, dude. She is like still crying. I broke this bitch. I broke this bitch. And like, I'm trying to do the I've been here before thing. And like, with the lay, I was like, happens all the time. It's, it's totally, <laughs> we're going to get her back. I just 45 minutes building this bitch. From the toes back up to her eyelashes, like, just bringing her back to life and putting her together. And I was like, hey, are we good? She's like, no, you're going to be hearing about this. And then, like, the contact was there, and she's like, I was like, see you next year? (laughs) No. (laughs) No. I have not been back to UConn since. So why do you think that happens? Why do you think that people go so... I think they're so relaxed and so under that when they come back up and come back to life... And the lights are on, and they're waking up in front of a hundred people staring at them. It must be a jarring experience, you know what I mean? Kind of like, like if you woke up, up in the morning, and that's where you were. That's where you were, yeah. Okay. You were at a, a I feel theater. A little, uh, I feel like, what, 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 yeah, what yeah, the fuck is this about? And that's what happened. But she was frozen. She was locked jawed, locked everything. She only got enough out. And, like, the girl that was with her was, like, dude, she was, like, us. She was not faking. It was a blubbery mess. Boogers coming down her face. She wasn't clearing them or anything. Like, it was scary. Wow. So you never I, told me that story No, before. why would I? That was under your company's umbrella. Why would you I? Yeah, you it? hired me to do the gig. Probably you took, I probably got paid $600. You took $600. So for $600, you don't get to <laughs> hear about the story. Steve Keir said, he goes, that happened to my prom date. <laughs> Yeah, but that was because Which one? of fentanyl. Yeah, are we on the fentanyl? <laughs> was, was, it, was it the... That was fentanyl. How far back is he Ruf, listening? Rufinol or whatever. Hypnol? Or hypnol, thank you. Do they even do that anymore? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. You don't hear about roofies anymore. Product of the 90s. I, I think guess. they're just... Di- it, well, you, well, a roofie was what? Rufalin? But anything to knock somebody out kind of has that name. You know, ooh, roofied. Sleeping time. Yeah. Sleep time night nights. Thanks for joining us at the night show live. I'm Ryan Roberts. Please like, please comment and share. Um, the more you like, the more um, likely that we'll be sticking around doing the show. We do the show every night, 8 o'clock, uh, not weekends, because I like to party on weekends. We do like to do that. Yeah, it's true. So Monday through Friday, we have different guests. Wednesday is uh, Lappy's night. He's going to be bringing on guests. Friday is my good friend um, Matthew James. And we'll occasionally have a, a guest come in. I think we're going to have uh, Christine uh, come in and do some tarot card readings for you and see what's wrong with you. See what's wrong with me? <laughs> if yeah, anyone, well, can... not see what's wrong with you, but uh... let's find out. Let's see where this is all building towards because I don't know. Math, uh, Maxwell McGee says a hypnotist. A hypnotist once made me dance to Beyonce, single ladies on stage. Let's just be honest. A hypnotist did, did not, not make you make do you that. do that. You were going to dance. You to did Beyonce. that on your own because. Who doesn't love that tune, right? Good tune. Oh, the single day. Oh. I don't know. I'm, sure. I'm, a, I'm scared to be a hypnotist now. I do my high school. I do the after proms in the spring. And those kids are resilient. So, like, even if they fall out of their chair and hit their head on the ground, which happens at least once a year, because I'm, like, a very lax hypnotist, uh, the, like, a kid will fall out of their chair. I'm like, oh, fucking permanent damage there. Hope that's. But I do it in the spring because it pays so well. But the rest, of the, I got to get insurance. No, you do. I don't work for you anymore, and you had all the insurance. Kevin Regan says, who is this? Um, Kevin, this is my friend Matthew James. He is a uh, a hypnotist. He is an Uber driver. He is a game show host. He is a wrestling ring announcer. Wrestling ring announcer. He is a uh, big pothead. 
He is it's my your fault. He's my friend. I'm your good friend. He's my good friend. So yeah, uh, he's uh, gonna be with us on Fridays. Jimmy uh, said he tried calling. No, yeah, he didn't. then he wants. Then he's like, no, he "Call didn't. myself." He picked up his Sprint phone. He flipped open his flip phone, and he's like, "I don't know." I called <laughs> Ryan. We can't. I can't. Oh, Jimmy. I'll try Jimmy again. Let's try him. You got to get off your uh, Jim. He's got to get off the live feed. Yeah, right? you got to get off the live feed, and I can call you. All right, man. He goes, call my cell. What did we just blow up? Did we, was that a lightning in here? What was that? Did, did you kick lose, the light? Uh, yeah, you shut off the oh, light. Oh, our girl's not lit anymore. You're a travesty. Oh, everything's a travesty with you, Jim Lauber the third. Oh, just bad. burnt out? Yeah. Now our girl's not lit. I have a question. Is that is that um, Wow from the Jersey Shore? Is that oh, who that girl is? No. Uh, close, but I no. think it is. It's close. Do you know who it is? Like, do you know uh, for a fact? Lappy that... knows her. We're L- trying to when get her. When she did the shoot, we're, we're trying, trying to get, her, to get her on the. We're trying to get her on the show. Oh, that's a real person. Oh, that's yeah. a real person. They do it's the one of our girls. It's every one year. of our rock girls. Yeah. Uh, so that we just have... means a girl from a modeling agency. That doesn't. Mean... <laughs> no, no. The rock girls like you have to. You have to write like who you are. You send in some pictures, yeah. and then you. Why come would in... I be a good rock girl? Right, and then you send in some pictures, and then we. We, then we uh, test you for fentanyl. <laughs> yeah. And then Ryan has to Narcan And then you, you Narcan. And, uh, no, you then, uh, and there's a new girl every month with a new picture every day. A nude picture every day? New. Oh, N-E-W. sorry. N-E-W. And um, Brittany was our, I think she was our rock girl two or three years I think ago. it was two years ago. So we're going we're gonna to try to get her on the show. We're going to also try to get more sexy ladies on the show. Because uh, I'm sorry, or like ah, just what ah, I know. ah, sexy lady I'm, to I'm see what's up. I'm sorry that I'm such a a horrific looking individual. You look good, Chief. Well, you were because, looking, you know. Well, I I let it. I let. So what happened? You let was, a lot go. Yeah. What happened <laughs> was I started no shave November in September. Yeah. And then no shave November turned into no shave ever. Ever. And then they asked me if I wanted to do an endorsement for Bic. And I said, hell yeah. It, they, like, they wanted you to slit your wrists with the fucking <laughs> razors. They were... So I, I, cho- I could choose whatever razor I wanted, and I chose the Bic Flex 5 because I need five blades. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it's great, Took man. it down nice. You look good, man. You always look better when you try. You go through these periods of just, of like, of just not trying. I, and no, also, in addition to not trying, not caring that you're not trying. So it's just a, no, a terrible, like, perfect storm of What I wanted to do is bluff. I really wanted to get, like, a big, fluffy beard going. You did. And I did get a big, fluffy beard. But it was but coming out of your ears. That's I told I said that. I was like, <laughs> I had my longer hair growing out of my ears oh, than I did on top of my head. Uh, Thanks for joining the night show. So Friday night is just a bullshit night. A lot of people are out and about. We're just chit-chatting and bullshitting. Uh, we thank you for tuning in. Please like, please comment, and share. I think Jimmy finally got a hang of this. Let's see if uh, I'm going to answer. Jimmy Nance, a good friend of mine, a longtime PLR listener. This dude's been listening, I mean, back when Stone Man was around, back when uh, uh, Smith and Barber were here. So I'm trying to answer Jimmy's call right now. Oh, man. I think he's connecting. There he is, five, because Hello. I need five blades. Ooh, I got him. He's here. And, uh, you there? It, it's great. Took yes, it down nice. You're good, man. Hi, hi. You always look better when you try. You go through these periods hold, hold of on, just, like, on, of just on, not on. trying. And know. also, in addition to not trying, not caring that you're oh, not man. trying. So it's just a, no. a terrible, no. like. Okay, there we go. We did it. Yeah, bro. Okay, hold on one second. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, my hold God. on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, Jimmy. I'm fixing. We gotta, get, we gotta get more volume. I'm fixing it. Yeah, I don't think more volume is the problem. <laughs> where did you go? Uh, where did he go? Oh, I don't know. Where's the? You gotta turn down your uh, thing. Turn down your radio. Right, hold on, hold on. Cough Man. into the mic if you can. Where did you go? This is ridiculous. We stink at this. Here, you talk oh, about that, something. Sorry. I can still hear him. Is that better? We have the TV on. Sorry. Is that better? Yeah, but I can't see you now. Let me just let me call you right back. All right. Oh, we're bailing. Oh, what do you mean? Oh no, I got you. Oh, okay, we did you, it. you were on a different. Uh... Right, hold on. 
Hold on. No, no, you, you had it right. It? No, you had it right. Oh, Jesus. Go sideways again. There you go. Yes. Perfect. And now we'll bring our you. nightly session of Skyping with baby boomers. There you the first go. first five minutes are us. All right. All right. That should be the name of that should be the name of the segment. Skyping <laughs> baby boomers. <laughs> How do I use what? this the phone? How do we I use really phone? don't know. <laughs> hey, what's up, Matty Swat? How are you, man? How are we doing? And we Matthew can see James. them too. They got Matthew their lights James, on. Protect the gimmick. What's up, Matt? Be quiet. For How are you, man? Nice to see you guys. I just want to tell you, Ryan. Yeah. You look really good with your hair. I, I totally. I'm digging your hair. You like the, the back of hair. You like the bald but, look? Well, obviously you like the bald I look here. Love the, well, you know, I love the bald look. Hell so yeah, I'm bro. Really the bald look, look, I'm growing it out too, just like you. Yeah, you guys look alike. Nice. Yeah, it it's is. Not it nice. look, we, we look like brothers. Oh, my God. Hence, we are brothers. Hello. So what's up, Matt? Nothing, man. Good to see you guys. I haven't seen you guys since our uh, summer blockbuster yeah, party, man. Beckett. Yeah. I don't know if the old girl is going to be able to make it. So I'm going to have to buy a van, bro. Dude, here's the thing. This is the last time I saw you. You jacked down your pop-up trailer. You threw a bunch of chairs on top of said backed-up trailer. And then you just drove off a fucking mountain. This is mountain. fine. You just drove down the mountain. You, you and didn't, I didn't tie didn't anything, tie anything down. down. There's no way to go. Chairs. Time to go, everybody. But, Tina says it's time to go. It's true, time Matt. to go. That is exactly All your chairs. You just threw it on top like this is how that works. Yes. And you know what is even worse? When I got there, all I saw was you running around with no shoes no on and a pouring rainstorm going, park here, park here. That's what I do. How could you walk around with no shoes? I didn't put. I don't put shoes on from July twentieth to August tenth in Beckett, Massachusetts. I don't wear shoes. Right, don't, don't, don't let it out. Yeah, I know, but don't let it out there because somebody will find out where we are, and we don't want them. No to one's know. finding it. Yeah, follow the chair of follow the trail of things that have fallen <laughs> off of Jimmy's camper. That's the only way they're going to find us. So, Why are you walking away, team? So we have a uh, – um, my friends and I have a big party up in the woods. Uh, we have a cabin in the woods, <laughs> very nice cabin in the woods. We have a big party. Yeah. Um, and uh, Jimmy and uh, I became friends from him listening to – was actually, I was just on weekends, and then I got on the night show, and he would call all the time. And uh, so I, I, he, they invited me over for dinner one night, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. I'll go. So if anyone wants to invite me over for dinner, I'm there. And, um, but in typical Ryan fashion, you were like, fuck it, you guys are invented to a party. So they show up at 3.30 p.m. on a Thursday, and you don't show up till like 9 o'clock the next day. <laughs> and we're and just people... taking these people's word for it that they knew. I'm like quizzing them, like, who told you to come here? <laughs> That's... Ryan from the radio. Are I you never, sure? I never that... told anybody about this. Yeah. And, and you shouldn't tell anybody else. Oh, well. Gig is the the, the, the gig, gig is up. The gig. the gig is up. I said gig. He says jig. Whatever. Hey, you can't say jig. It's bad. Don't be racist. So what did uh, <laughs> what have you uh, thought of the show so far? You've been watching. Uh, you know, I I like this. The guy the other night. Oh, uh, you know, sweat is cool. You know, we love my name sweat. is Matthew Matt, James. Matt it's well. Matthew James. Protect his, the gimmick. His, his nickname is Sweat because he's really sweaty. <laughs> I know because he was. That's why I said Sweat was sweaty. Right. So, what guy didn't Matthew you like? James the Wednesday guy? Cool. The Tuesday guy you didn't like? What, yeah. he, what did you think about us? What guy didn't you like? I don't think it's not that he didn't like him. Jimmy is a very um, a big gun proponent. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that their philosophy is it's like if you're like a, a baseball, like a, like a pro baseball player, you're yeah. not going to be exactly the same kind of pro baseball player as another pro baseball sure. player. So I think that's what, what, uh, what Jimmy's ish. Jimmy's got. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much there. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy's uh, a, the shoot a, first, ask questions later. He is sort of thing. <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy enjoys his uh, his weaponry. He 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 texted me one day because he was happy to go to Co it was he bought his own Christmas present. He went to Cabela's yes. because they were on sale. He bought a crossbow. Yeah, because everyone why needs you? a crossbow no, for like home in defense. Central Connecticut. Why right. wouldn't you want to? No, well, <laughs> just in case. Yes, because it's very quiet. You never know. Just in case like you had to quietly kill a burglar for some reason. <laughs> or or something in the yard. You never, you never know, know, bro. What, fuck, Robin know. Hood? What are you <laughs> killing with a crossbow? <laughs> I, I missed that. The Sheriff of Nottingham? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, mean, 
I missed that. I missed it. Who you try? I, he said, "Who are you trying to shoot at? The sheriff of Nottingham?" Oh, sheriff of Nottingham. Oh, oh no, 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 no. We 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 don't like him anyway. But you know, Robin, Robin, Sir Robin. <laughs> How many, shots of, how many shots of fireball have you had this evening, Jimmy? Oh, they don't no. count any shots. He you doesn't measure in shots. Absolutely none. None? I haven't had any oh, no. fireball. Jack Daniels. I Jack Daniels. Oh, I'm part of nice. Jack Fire. Okay, Jack Fire. So you, you got to call it like it is. Oh, Not right. really. Sorry. No. You know, a lot I, of people have made the switch from fireball to Jack Fire. Fireball was fentanyl. Fire. Is less fentanyl. No, they, because yeah, fireball it's, it's had. $4.97 more a liter. <laughs> and they said something like Fireball had antifreeze in it or something like Who that. Who said that? Hey, it was they, just this thing going around. They. The yoga mat in the Subway bread people <laughs> said that. <laughs> That's true, too. No, but didn't they, didn't they say that <laughs> no, it, it had the properties or somebody <laughs> just totally? No, no. Oh, uh, no, did, you lost did. me, bro. Yeah, we know. Well, we lost I don't the, think we uh, ever had you, babe. We lost the screen. But we're going to. Thanks for uh, watching, Jimmy. We're going to let Jimmy go. Uh, yeah, thanks, bro. Hey, I'll talk to you soon. Give me a call tomorrow, will you? Uh, I'll, well, you call me. I'm going to be working from. I'll be on air from uh, ten to uh, ten to three. Okay, right. great. We'll, we'll I'll talk, talk to you tomorrow. Hey, we Bye, love Ryan. you. It was a great show tonight. Bye, Ryan. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night, Jimmy and Tina Nads. Good friends of mine. So, how long after the uh, the Narcan incident were you were you like, hey, I gotta, I'm out of this. I'm out. Of, I don't work at the strip club anymore. I sirs. made that. I made that decision as you were coming down with literally the as I was as <laughs> I was, heard. As I heard the Narcan <laughs> into her body, I was like, well, my job's done here. This is it for me. I, I have officially had enough. Well, you can't really top that. No. I mean, what, what, could you t- what story could you top? You, you really can't in your time of working at the club. Okay, here's another one. Could you top that story? Could I top that story? Not really. There's a lot of like things, like shitty things that happened yeah. while I was working there. Like, for instance, a girl... Uh, got into a fight with a guy, yeah. and I was managing at the time. And of course, she picks a dude that's six foot four and has a face tattoo. You don't sick me. No. I'm five nine. Go get him. I'm five nine. I'm not, I'm a lover, not a fighter, and I'm barely a lover. So <laughs> she's like, "This guy is la 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 la." And I looked up at the dude. And I'm like, "Is she giving you a problem, sir? Sir, is, is this, there anything I can is do? This, could I make your stay here any better?" Uh, would you like a Mr. drink, sir? Mr. Face, Mr. I Face did. I gave, him a, I gave him a drink. Here's a drink. And I kicked her out. I kicked her out. Yeah, it's easier to kick out a wow. four-nine girl than a six-nine dude. Right. And then the dude was angry. He's like, oh, I gave blah, blah. I'm like, listen, I'm sorry, sir. Could I get you a drink, Mr. Face Tattoo? Now, Crystal, you insulted the man. <laughs> yes. Say, apologize. I ain't apologizing for shit. Cinnamon. All right. Time to go home, Cinnamon. <laughs> no more Cinnamon. In that case, the customer was always right. Did you? Did you? Uh, so now, is this your? Is this your number one gig? Are you Ubering anymore? Are you doing the Uber thing? You know, I I Ubered for a while. I Ubered with my Mercedes. Right. I was yeah. I was working at the strip club. I was working here only on weekends, and I was Ubering, and um, and I had enough of Ubering because there was too many. You Uber for a little. You yeah, Uber. I did. Yeah, I, I think I'm retired from Uber. Are you? You made the retirement. <laughs> so it's just. Uh, I liked it. I was doing it. Here's what it is. I do trivia nights in Western Massachusetts. Western Mass trivia nights. Uh, and when the kids leave for winter break, I lost like three gigs for the month. So I was like, Hey, I just got this brand new car, my Dodge Journey. So. Why don't I try to Uber? And I it was Uber XL, didn't realize that, which means I can make even more money off that. So I chased the surges around and like had a couple hundred dollar nights or two hundred dollar nights. I like to make a hundred dollars, whatever I do. You know what I mean? My trivia nights or whatever. If it's ring announcing, just try to get a hundred bucks. Like if you make a hundred bucks a day, no education and twenty years of performing under your belt, you're doing okay. I'd like to you know get good paydays, but. Yeah, so I was doing it, and then I worked. Should I just tell the story or yeah, what? T- do the story. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, this it's gonna sh- settle in, folks. So it's surging prices. You chase the surge. You look. It looks like uh, chicken pox or something. I like the, you chase fentanyl on the drive. <laughs> <laughs> you never stop. So if it's surging in red, the 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 prices are two times, three times. So it was Christmas. I had just started. This is just a couple weeks ago. Or last month. So they are, I'm showing my family, they're very interested in it because they're like, oh, wow, a job. Like, cool. 
He's Yay. got he's got something that's not talking in the microphone. They're very supportive. My family's very supportive. Always have been. So I was like, ah, screw it. Let me do it. It's a three time surge. Let me sign into Uber. So I sign into Uber. I'm in. Let's say I'll change the location, but I'll keep like the reference points. Let's say I, I was in Hartford. I I, I was uh, started my trip in Hartford. So I go. Uh, I pick up the the person. They made me wait. Five or ten minutes because I got there really quickly. They were, they were, I was like, oh, cool, I'm gonna make some money. She goes, take me. Now it's a 40 year old Korean lady who speaks very broken English, but like very sweet. And like I could tell she has a big white fur coat on. And she gets in the car and I go, hey, where are we going? She goes, Union Station, Hartford. So I go, okay, uh, hop in. She goes, can you take. You know, we're up we're up kind of closer to West Hartford, up by like Chengdu or AC Peterson and that that whole area up there. She's like, Hey, can you take Park Ave? I want to check something. I'm like, Cool, not the same not the route I would go, but I want to check something. So we go up to Park Ave. She goes, Okay, pull in here. I'm not gonna do her broken English, but just know that everything I'm saying is in a broken English, <laughs> like very thick. So she goes, uh, pull in here, I have to check something. Now it's Christmas. It's literally Christmas. It's like six PM on Christmas. And I'm like, she probably wants to say goodbye to some family before right. she hits the town or something. She goes, pull in here. Uh, turn the lights off. So I turn the lights off. I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. But she's like, I get a good vibe. Like, I don't feel like a sketchy situation happening. Mm-hmm. So I turn the lights off. She goes, oh, this is my husband's house. We divorce him. And I was like, all right. Oh. I guess I am going to do her voice. So <laughs> she goes, we divorcing. Uh, stay right here. So we wipe her. She goes, okay, take me home. So I go to take her home. She goes, uh, turn off Uber. I give you money. And I was like, all right, I'll turn off Uber. Let's go. Fuck it. Turn off. Let's see where we're going with this. She goes, will you take me to, uh," she goes, "Uh, you take me to Southington? And I go, yeah, fine. I'll take you to Southington. Like she wanted to get on the bus in Southington instead. So I go, okay, fine. Uh, She goes, okay, take me home first. So we go back to her house. She goes in the house, comes back out. Now she goes, go back to Park Ave. So now we go back to the house that her and her husband own. We sit there for a second. She goes, Okay, never mind. We go to New York City, and I go, no, we're not going to New York, <laughs> wow. to New York City. Wait, was the house big? Because you're saying she's got like a fur coat on. I mean... No, it was a rental. It was like one of those multifamilies in West Hartford okay. there that yeah. they like, you know, they turn into like a, it's a big house, but like it clearly been split up. Like we lived in one chief when we lived together over by South Whitney in Hartford. And uh, so she goes, you take me to New York City? I go, no. She go, I go, how much? She goes, $500. I go, yep. So. Wow. So we start heading down 84, and we make it to Southington, Connecticut, right around, like, Route 10. Is that Route 10 there, whatever, yep. like, Plainville, yeah. Southington? Yep. She goes, uh, pull over. I need water. And I was like, that's cool. I need gas. We gotta, so we pull over. We get gas. She gets a water. She goes, uh, pull over here. I need to think. And I was like, all right, fine. Like, whatever. She, already, she is already giving me $300 towards the 500 So I'm like, whatever. She goes, uh, never mind. Take me back. I go, fuck it. I, she already gave me three hundred dollars. She gave me the She's cash. already giving me three hundred dollars wow. towards the five. I go fuck it. Whatever. We start heading back, and this is all off the books. Like I'll probably be fired from Uber for this, but I don't really. Whatever. I changed the location, so maybe they won't tell. Uh. So we start heading back. She goes, "Take me to Park Ave." So I go to the house again. Again, this is a third third time, time we've gone. Is to Is she house. on the phone the whole time? Like she's like doing, yeah, but not like sketchily. She's like on the phone as much as like a forty year old woman would be on the phone in the back of an Uber. You know what I mean? Right. So she starts telling about her husband. He's abusive. The family's abusive. Like they're mean people. She's a very happy person. She keeps telling me that it's been giving her um, constipation. The stress has been making her constipated. She mm. keeps telling me this, and I'm like, that's fine. Like, that's, I can, all right, I'm a good listener. Like, I'm going with the flow here. I already got $340 in my pocket because she gave me 40 for waiting originally and helping her with her bags. Excellent. So we're back on Park Ave. She looks at me. I pull over. She goes, you like pot? I go, do I? Do I ever? <laughs> <laughs> I go, yes. She goes, okay, wait right here. She goes in the house. I never see a light turn on in the house. This is the first time she's gone into the house. She goes into the house. She comes back with two giant paper bags. And I, and like she gets in and I know me. I was like, those are pot plants. Two like decent clone, like little pot plants. Like she, I go, I have to take care of she these. She brought pot wow. plants. <laughs> potted. <laughs> potted. Probably pot the husband. Plants. <laughs> she hands me. The fattest, shortest uh, joint 
She hands me a joint. And she goes, okay, now we go to New York City. I go, fuck yeah, we go to New York City. <laughs> I light up my joint. We start heading down. We're going to do 84, 684 to the Merit and come up the Hudson or whatever. She goes, take me to, and I lived in New York for a couple of years. She goes, take me to the Hilton. And I go, what the, the uh, what's it down the Flatiron? The Flatiron Hilton, whatever it is. Uh, Hudson, what the fuck? Is it? Herald Square. She goes, take me to Herald Square Hilton. I go, I know exactly what I'm doing. So I go, how much again? I'm just checking. Now I got to join in me and feel a little more better about my negotiation skills. I go, how much again? She goes, uh, four, five, six, seven. I go, what the fuck is she counting? Seven, eight. She goes, $1,100. And I go, okay. So now we're driving to New York. She gets on the phone. How much has she paid you up? Just 300 Just the 300 Don't, don't. You're ruining the story. Sorry. So she, she goes, <laughs> she goes $1,100. I give you five now. I go, okay. So she gives me $500. Holy shit. She gives me $500. And if she, she goes pulling uh, this out of you, a purse. Yeah, she's pulling out of her like Louis Vuitton. She's got all Louis Vuitton luggage. Okay. Like, and she's going on Christmas. She's like, at a, uh, on the, on the, like people save for months to stay at the Hilton and Herald Square during Christmas. So she's like, ah, fuck it. I go to that one. Like, she never heard of a Best Western in Jersey City or the Astoria, like, uh, <laughs> Courtyard Marriott. So. We start driving halfway there. We hit about like six, the 684 interchange. She gets on the phone with her sister in Korean and spends the next 40 minutes bawling in Korean, like bawling, top of her lungs bawling. And I'm just like, fuck it. Like, I still, I, I still got this joint. It's a fat, short joint. I keep smoking it. Fish comes on at 9 p.m. on XM. So I'm like, I'm going to listen to my fish concert. I turn it up a little bit. She's like, Matthew, you turn it down? I was like, yeah, fine. So I pause, <laughs> like, took my fish away. So we're rolling into town. I take the FDR in, cut over, 31st, drop her off, help her with her bags. She gives me another $600 when we get there. She forgot about the original $300 that she gave me, $1,400 oh on Christmas, all in hundreds. Small traces of fentanyl on all the <laughs> and it wasn't bills. and it wasn't because it was Christmas. It was just that's just what I think she like was she doing. thought that it was going. I did say that I wanted. She goes, "What you do tonight?" I was like, oh, "I'm going to go hang out with my family a little bit." So I think she felt a little bit bad, but like I don't think me going out with my family pushed it from five hundred dollars to eleven hundred dollars. So eleven hundred dollars. Yes, she gave me. She forgot about the original three hundred dollars she gave me to drive to Southington and back. Got too high. Fourteen hundred dollars. She barely smoked. She goes, no, not for me. I go, what do you mean not for you? You got two wow. fucking giant. Fourteen hundred dollars. I hit the West Side Highway. I back up. Five and a half hour round trip, dude. Fourteen hundred dollars. So then the next pe- morning, and free weed. Yeah, and the free and the joint, which uh, so which I was smoking for like a day and a half later. It was the shortest, thickest. <laughs> like you roll a good co- co- uh, cone. You roll a very good cone joint, a little bit of hash. If anyone's got any hash, that's not your hash. That's my friend Ryan's hash. <laughs> he, uh, you're a, just you're just holding it for him until he finds me. out about it. Yeah. So I'm smoking the joint, coming back. I tell my parents a thing, and they're like, well, are you going to sign into Uber? I go, I'm never signing to fucking Uber again. Why would I do a $7 drive to, to whatever, to Chengdu on West Hartford and Park Ave? When I can, do, I just made fourteen hundred dollars on Uber. I'm never driving for Uber again. That's it. Like it doesn't get better than that. I'm out. I'm getting out while the getting's good. Fourteen hundred dollars. I had made. I had been driving a month at that point. And it only made like three fifty because they're like they're like seven dollar rides. If you if you take an Uber ride and you get charged nineteen, like I'm only getting like eleven eleven dollars or so, and the receipts show you what they're. So anyway, there's my story. Wow, man. That is my, uh, the, the creme de la creme. Merry of Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. $1,400, made a car payment, bought some pot, settled up on some uh, phone bills, bought a wrestling championship belt. Of course That's did. what I do when I get a little money under my a replica championship belt. Of course. That's my Uber story. What would you think, folks? So, um, kind of want to drive for Uber. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> See if I have the same stroke time a lot. Time for me to re-up with Uber, man. So, um, Kevin Regan, uh, Nick Schultz, tell us about Tom Brady's mangled, destroyed hand. No, it's not. Tom Brady's hand is fine. You guys are marks. If you if you believe that Tom Brady's hand is messed up and it's going to affect anything about this game Sunday, you fed right into the Bill Belichick media regime. Tom Brady's going to be just fine. 
Um, How's Aaron Rodgers' mangled shoulder, Nick Schultz? <laughs> um, John Monroe says, in mass, they can grow in, in the house. How many plants are you allowed to grow? Do you know? I think six. Six plants? I think it's six. You can uh, each person can have up to six plants until, Is that with a until Jeff Sessions. Like no, it's no, legal. I think you can no. just do it. That's it's it. It's recreational. Got it's legal hell. in Massachusetts, wow. and in I think in July. Am I correct? July is they open up like the stores. I know there's going to be. Here's the thing about Massachusetts: we don't have the infrastructure for the like California and Colorado had medicinal for a decade. So the stores there's only three pot stores in Massachusetts right now. There's one in NoHo. There's one out by Steve King would know. But there's one out by the the things out there, but one out by the shore and stuff like that. But there's no, sorry, we don't have the infrastructure for it. Like it'd be the whole state lining up for these three show, these three stores. The guy that said that you look like a pedophile said, yeah. "Dude, you can drive an Uber school bus." <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that is for fourteen hundred dollars. What is pedophily about me? I know the lights cut through my hair and make it look a little thinner than it is, but I have a, is it my flannel? Is it my beard? Is it my glasses? All of me those. touching kids. All of those. What, what part <laughs> is <of those? laughs> uh, Tony says, "Hey Matt, do you see CM Punk returning for Raw twenty Raw twenty five? Okay, so I'm going with uh, Nick Schultz, who is in the chat room right now. We are going down there and sitting in box seats. Um, I'm going to cry a lot. Do I think CM Punk is going to return? No, not at Raw 25. I really don't think. Maybe for the Rumble. Maybe he'd be a surprise entrant in the Rumble. I'm also looking for a Batista return and maybe a Daniel Bryan return. Daniel Bryan number 30. How hot would that be? Daniel Bryan's number 30 and returns to the Superdome, the site of his greatest achievement in his career, WrestleMania 30, when he beat Triple H and Randy Orton in the... uh, in the triple threat match for the belt. So, like, if he gets back, if he comes back and, and fulfills that, goes back to New Orleans for WrestleMania 34 and takes the belt again, that'd be pretty sexy. I don't think CM Punk's... The the, the legends that they've announced is going to be enough to feed the three-hour Raw. I think Rock might show up because he was instrumental. I'd love to see Hulk Hogan, but no, I don't think CM Punk will be back. How the hell do we get to wrestling? Because, I don't know, they must it have watched last week. It always comes back to wrestling. Sure does, Fred. Thanks Poor for Ryan. watching tonight, uh, Night Show Live. I'm Ryan Roberts. With me, as always, my illustrious producer, Jim Lauber the third. My guest, this Friday and every Friday, we have Matthew James. Um, it's just a bullshit night. Friday night, I decided I just want to take it easy, and we're just going to bullshit about whatever comes to mind. If you have any questions for me, like uh, I've got a lot of uh, stripper, um, a lot of strippers. Um, Numbers. Stripper stories. No, oh. I was gonna. I was thinking strippers um, ODing on Narcan, but two, I only have two one. Of the great the stories one. tonight. Yeah, though. I only have one. Uh, one stripper. Dude, your shrapnel nut story is great. Yeah, that is a great. I have a yeah. whole new respect for you in the in the that you have shrapnel in your nuts, yeah, dude. That's I'm, awesome, and I'm glad that. And I the found way you out. told it when you said you bat winged it to yeah. inspect it, I thought that it was sticking out a little bit, and no, you retrieved no, no, no. this this. No, thing. you could see it. And it's there. It's gray, um, and it's magnetic. It's a piece of metal. That's so if awesome. yeah, if you so. if you missed that show, um, James Lauber, my producer, we had a uh, a guest cancel on Monday. So James was my guest. He was a uh, is a Marine, and he was injured in Fallujah, in his Humvee. A grenade came into his turret because he is a machine gunner, and he got about one third of the way out mm-hmm. before it exploded. Injured the driver, injured another person, uh, injured uh, my friend James, mm. and he spent a while in a wheelchair. And then, about a year, two years later, he's taking a shower, and he finds a piece of shrapnel in his uh, my coin sat- purse, his in his satchel, satchel in my satchel. And now he can do a cool bar trick where he attaches magnets. He's basically his balls are like a refrigerator. He can yeah. keep notes there for himself. Mm-hmm. Put artwork. <laughs> right. So thanks for joining us. Please like. Please share. And we'll be back on Monday. When we're, when we're back, please comment. I'm Ryan Roberts, Night Show Live. Thank you, Matthew James. Thanks. For, see you next Friday. For being here. If you'd like to see him, um, if you'd like to, what's your Instagram? It's official Matthew James. You can see me, Pioneer Valley Pro Wrestling, February 10th at the Eastfield Mall in Springfield, Massachusetts. Western Mass Trivia Nights is the name of my trivia company. doesn't really apply to a lot of things down here, but... Uh, Thanks, guys. Please like my page and uh, follow me on Facebook. Or can you tag me on the thing when we get out I of here? I can, yes. 
John I need Mon- friends. John Monroe commented, I got an awesome stripper story from Miss Pips in Newington. Someday I'll tell you. It's Mr. We're going to be calling him soon. Yeah, so, yep. pro- well, probably John will give you a call next Friday, so don't forget to join us next Friday. I'd like to hear John Monroe's stripper stories. In fact, if you guys are out there and have some fantastic stripper stories, we could just do stripper stories next strippers. Friday. That's how you got started here at the radio station. You got a, you were I telling stripper Chaz, stories. I, I actually have a rookie a rookie uh, patron story about me going to a strip club for the first time. Well, there you go. You'll enjoy go. that. There you strippers. go. Next Friday, stripper stories. Ladies, if there's any ladies watching, you can tell us about uh, either A, how you became a stripper, B, how you caught your significant other with a stripper, uh, C, how much you hate strippers, or how much you enjoy going to strip clubs with your significant other. Any of those stories, we'll be happy to Good hear. Good stories. Good stories. Uh, Once again, it's The Night Show Live. I'm Ryan Roberts. Thank you. We'll see you on Monday.